Hello everyone, good to have you in the garden today. For the better part of the month, we've been getting really cool weather, weather in the mid 70s with some cloud cover. So the plants have pretty much been chilling. The last couple of days and continuing on, we'll see warmer weather. We're getting weather in the mid 80s with a lot of sun. So now the plants are really jiving and dancing and they're growing well and there's lots to show you. So um, we're gonna break it up into a few videos and also with uh, a lot of things going on there are the um, spring grand backyard tour videos that were promised so we're gonna lump them together uh, today we'll be looking at the raised planters and we'll um, put that as part of our spring grand tour in part four and we'll be looking at tomatoes, veggies, and carrots. In um, the next video, we'll probably be look looking at corn, beans, and pumpkins and such. So um, today we'll be doing some gardening and showing you some of the space here for the part four of the Grand Tour. So you have to imagine this space without these seed trays here. But the look we're going for with the area closest to the house is more of a traditional gardening look for more aesthetic points. And we've gotten a lot of questions about these concrete blocks here. These are planter blocks and they're available at select Home Depots here in Southern California. And um, for, ev for everyone else uh, in other parts of the country, you may want to check with your Home Depots about these blocks if you're interested in them. So with these nice straight boards and, and symmetry, it has a very traditional uh, gardening look. And to match that, this year we're planting our plants in nice even spaces to give that, to finish that look off. Later on, we're going to do some woodworking um, and build a trellis here with fence boards and I hope to be able to do a video and, and bring you along and show you um, that project. It's, it's on the drawing boards, everything is uh, conceptual right now and hopefully we can waddle together uh, a trellis with fence posts. So that's going to be an experiment and hopefully it'll work. As far as um, the updates on the plants, we have some bok choy. They're, they're doing semi-okay. We had one that we harvested and had, um, had it in soup, so we harvested one. And um, this one's doing really well. We've, get, we've gotten a lot of slug come by, and I haven't been able to come out and manually remove them, so I, I hope to have time to do that. And this one's bolted. Here are our Bloomsdale long-standing spinach, and we've already taken um, two harvests from them by just pinching them off and had them with soup. And if you have little kids, if you chop them up and put it in egg, an omelet or scrambled egg, that's a good way to get them their spinach. These have really pretty wrinkles, and the leaves are quite um, firm, so they have a little bit of a crunchiness our next crop is Levois spinach. So this is a part of succession planting that we're putting more of an emphasis in this year. So we have this one and then this one's going to be next online. The Levois is more of a, a flatter spinach and this is nice because unlike the Bloomsdale where there are creases, there's a likelihood for them to have um, dust or dirt in them. But since we're growing in nice garden soil, there's not fine clay powder that will develop onto the leaves and make it hard to clean. So that's, um, but if you have really fine clay that gets all over the place, then you may want to consider the Levois variety. Some more succession bok choy, and these guys are looking better, uh, minus some of the slug slug snacking on them. 
Coming down this way, we have carrots that are coming up. These are Red Core Ch uh, Chantenay French Heirloom carrots. So we have two rows. And once again, we've amended this little section here marked by these pencil lines with a lot of coconut cord. So we're hoping that the soil will be nice and loose and we'll get nice straight carrots. Over there we have some onions going and growing a nice big round onion is something that's on my um, bucket list, gardening bucket list. So this is kind of haphazardly done. Um, we'll, we have some walla walla and some, so these are the walla wallas, a nice sweet onion. Um, once those bok choy at the end over there are done, we're going to sow some um, onions that has a lot of sun in that area. So uh, we're going to move some of the lettuce and greens this way since they don't like, since they don't seem to be responding too well to the amount of sun they're getting. And really quickly, this is uh, mossy curly parsley. So now let's do some tomato updates or part of the tomato updates update here in the um, planter area. This is a Cherokee purple and it's starting to blossom so we're gonna pinch off the blossoms. It's not ready to fruit so we're gonna save the, tr the plant from sending all its energy to fruiting and we'll pinch off any suckers. Here's, here's an example. These are, these are all indeterminate or pole tomatoes. So basically they'll grow into a vertical vine and we want to train it that way. They'll, they'll make these side shoots that come off the main stem and they're called suckers. And the reason they're called suckers is they'll grow into a new plant. And since there's not enough nutrients in the soil to support all the new growth, um, the fruit may not be big, so we're going to take the suckers off. And we won't do that for, we won't do that together in the interest of time, but we're going to go down that way and do and remove the suckers that are there. There's one thing to mention. This, this one, by the way, is a brandy wine tomato. This one is a is the Aunt Ruby German green tomato and it's just I haven't had good luck with it it's it's just one thing or another something came and chopped off the main growth good thing about tomatoes they make suckers so we're gonna get a new plant out of this and two suckers have been made so we'll take this one off and let this become uh, the main tomato plant and then real quick um, you're probably curious about some of the other varieties that we have. This is a Black Prince tomato and grown from uh, seed that we saved last year. And you can see the difference in growth between um, the seeds that you save because they're nice and fresh versus the ones that you get from seed packet, which may be, I'm guessing those seeds are probably a few years old since they take a long time to germinate and grow so slowly. This one is let's see what the tag says the black crim it's grown nice and over here is the mortgage lifter these this one is a really um, grew from really old seeds so the next thing to do with these tomatoes is to start to hill them with soil so we'll do that let's pinch these off bottom leaves we'll pinch them off and then we'll get some soil and we'll hill these up here I've got a mix of peat moss our native clay some azomite some compost and once again we're hilling it up so that we can encourage uh, more root growth from the plant and we started these plants pretty low we had them uh, pretty much in a trench down here. And as they grew, we backfilled so that they get more exposure to dirt. The other thing is it also helps support the plant. So we'll hill this up. 
and then we'll do that for the other plants as well. Let's take a look at this other planter before we take a look at the rest of the tomatoes that we're growing. Here we have the Suiho hybrid variety of Chinese kale or gailan. It hasn't been doing too well. I'm not sure if it's because of the amount of sun that it's getting. What I've done is I've pinched off the, the growth because it was starting to bolt and um, we're hoping for side shoots and get new plants to harvest from them. So here is an example, some of the side shoots. Um, so what I should have really done was probably just cut it down all the way and get new growth from there. Um, yeah, we're just keeping an eye on, on these guys. So far they're not looking too good. Over here are some more succession bok choy that we're growing. Um, and once again, lots of um, slugs have come by. And here we have another tomato. I think this is one of our extra Black Prince tomatoes. Yep, it's a Black Prince tomato. And it's really ready to be backfilled again. And these are volunteer um, gailan. This is a different variety. This is a very leafy variety. And here are our purple broccoli that was sown last fall and they continue to grow and they haven't, haven't bolted yet. So we're still waiting to see if we get broccoli and what size of a crown we get. Um, this is a shallot. This is a French heirloom variety, the Zebrun, and we're growing this to seed safe. Here's another brandy wine, and this one's doing really well. It's starting to make buds, and it's starting to make suckers, so we'll take out one of them. And the idea is to train it along this uh, pole here. We want it to create a nice canopy and shade our galangal that's growing down there. Last year we found that the galangal was hit by afternoon sun and it didn't like it, so we have this brandy wine and we're going to train it up this really long pole. It keeps going and going. There might be a golden goose at the end of that, hopefully. The um, other thing we're going to do updates on are potatoes. Since tomatoes and potatoes are cousins, we'll lump them together. Here are some potatoes that are grown from store-bought potatoes that um, didn't, we didn't get a chance to use and they started to eye up. So I like to just put them in the ground and hill them as they grow. And this hilling te technique is very common with uh, potatoes. And since the tomato and potatoes are cousins, we're gonna borrow that hilling technique and try it out and see if it'll work with the pole tomatoes and the bush tomatoes, especially the bush tomatoes, like these Italian Romas. These are also known as indeterminate. So basically we wanna keep the suckers on the uh, tomatoes and we're going to hill them as they grow and see if the, the hilling will help support the tomatoes and that way we won't have to worry about and, and spend uh, a little bit of effort to cage them or, or to support them. So that's something that we're trying this year. Um, and they're ready to be backfilled from our below grade planting, below grade transplanting. The other thing we're trying this year is growing uh, the bush tomatoes uh, with, with one another nearby. So um, this is something that Jennifer from Eat a Yard suggested. So we're going to try this and see if it works for us. We have one, two, three um, trial uh, spots. And these, these were selected because uh, when we transplanted our tomatoes, we had uh, plants next to one another and the ones that were together that we kept were really, really strong. So we kept the strong ones together. Some of the 
okay or runty ones we, we thinned out and had them grow as one plant. So we'll go and look at that area where we have a clump of potatoes growing and they're looking really strong. So once again, um, we had some potatoes that eyed up and we needed a space for them and this was it. And since they're doing so well, I think we learned something about potato growing and we're gonna try it out with a new spot that we created over there, this whole row here. Um, I think it was earlier this week, we dug down and then we discovered a giant tree root. So we severed it and left it in place. And the root is going to be part of the hugel um, culture bed that we're practicing here on the uh, Never Enough Dirt channel. That's basically where we dig down and we put down our green waste as a way to recycle the green waste and as a way to um, keep it on site and then also to not um, use up landfill space. It's, a, it's something that's a precious commodity these days here in Southern California. So we get to keep our um, green waste and save uh, landfill space by putting it on the very bottom of the, the bed. It'll break down, absorb uh, water and retain water for us. And um, we have new growing areas. So we're gonna, we're gonna tr this, this area looks like it's gonna be good for potatoes and we're gonna try it out uh, morning shade and afternoon sun. So we're going to test it out and see if the potatoes that we grow over there will be nice and robust looking like these plants. And when they look like this, it's a generally good indicator that we'll get good potatoes at the end. So we're waiting for them to dry back and we'll dig and see if we get um, big potatoes. We have our Italian Roma tomatoes that were seeded the same time as the ones that we just saw. And these were just transplanted earlier this week after making this bed. So they're going to be a little bit smaller than the other ones because they've been root bound and not getting the same amount of nutrients as the ones in the ground. So we're back here in this part of the yard again and we'll swing over here and look at some of our other vegetable crops that are growing. This is a container of dragon purple. I hope I, get the, I got the name right, carrots. And coconut core is something that we're experimenting with this year. This has been, um, this container has been amended with a lot of coconut core. And the idea is that the soil will be nice and loose and we'll get nice long and straight carrots. So we'll hope we're hoping to cross that off the bucket list, grow lots of nice straight carrots. There are lots of volunteer plants in here and the carrots are the the green ones. These are amaranth, so we're gonna have to thin them out. We have lots of volunteer amaranth in the yard and we're gonna get some amaranth elsewhere. Um, this is a weed. This one, I'm not sure what this is. This is un, unknown to me. Uh, here's another weed. And then this is another plant. I'm not sure what this is. Could it be a cucumber? Possibly a cucumber? Not entirely sure. Maybe we'll uh, let it grow out some more and see what it is. Looks like we have some volunteer basil and a volunteer tomato. These are generally, generally cherry tomatoes. I'm not a huge fan of cherry tomatoes. They're too acidic for me. So back here, we're gonna finish out our Grand Tour, Spring Grand Tour Part 4. And this is for folks that are here for the Spring Grand Tour Part 4. Uh, our succulent planter has quite a few um, different types of plants in them. This is great that it's raised. It keeps um, our kids safe from some of the uh, more thorny plants. 
and um, speaking of which this needs to be cut back but I wanted to keep it here and show you guys this is a crown of thorns it's a very uh, common and pretty succulent the other th great thing about succulents is that they're great keepsakes for instance this one came from our wedding um, uh, reception this table centerpiece and it's it's um, growing here it's also great for your guests and we've had our our friends and relatives uh, tell us that the succulents from our centerpiece is growing nicely in their garden and it's a good reminder of that special day here's another um, keepsake this is from um, the bouquet that um, was gifted to my wife for her first Mother's Day and we have some other ones that came from wedding day like this one um, from her from her um, wedding um, bouquet some of the other more interesting succulents is this one I, I can't pronounce it at the moment it's got really pretty flowers it, it blooms profusely but I enjoy the um, bud that it forms right before it it blooms and that over there is a pine cone or bristle cone um, cactus and we have just a lot of things here if you're interested there's a more uh, complete video on the succulent tour my favorite type of uh, succulent might might be the aloes the snowflake aloes so we have um, a lot of different snowflake aloes growing around and the one that uh, a lot of people have commented on is this baseball plant it's a really interesting plant it's got a little little flowers you can tell it's gender by its flower but I really never looked it up and here's our newest guy he's adding a little bit of pop in this in this space here uh, it's a euphorbia and um, here's another one this is I never got the name of this one it looks like a rock and the reason is out in the desert there will be things going for for um, for the water in the succulents so they'll have to hide themselves and camouflage themselves to look like rocks so that so there's a whole um, group of cactus that look like rocks and such or succulents so yeah this is uh, our succulent garden that's gonna be it for our tomatoes potatoes and other veggies update next we'll probably look at corn squashes and beans and possibly melons so uh, once again thanks for coming out and joining me here in the garden happy gardening and I'll see you in the next one look at those mulberries glistening in the sunlight it's ready to be picked Oh, it just came off by itself. So we have this one to share um, between two, or actually three people, myself, my wife, and my kid. But when those other ones are ready, everyone can have one to themselves. Oh man, super sweet. I want to take another bite, but next time.